Now we're going to do the testing or the evaluation and the fitting of the orthotic in my lovely patient here, Georgiana, who has horribly flat feet. So we're going to do the, the testing. Again, the Form Orthotics company has come up with six tests. I like it. It kind of reduces it down to six tests that will help you to determine, you know, the kind of orthotic to use. I'm going to add a few things in myself that I like doing. So if you turn around, we're going to look at the posture all the way around. We're going to look at the posture of the rear foot. And you can see on Georgiana that there is a calcaneal valgus posture. So here's the lower limb, right, the tibia. You can actually draw a line if you want. Lower limb here and then the, the calcaneus here, right? And you can see how the calcaneus is moving in this direction. So it's a calcaneal valgus posture of the rear foot on both sides. That usually indicates that there is some, you know, excessive pronation, but we'll, we'll wait and see on that. So that's one thing positive that we can certainly change by using the orthotic device. Okay, you can, you can turn around now. Next thing is just balance, really. And there's a bunch of balance tests out. So you're gonna stand on one leg for me with hands on your hips. Okay, we're gonna look at how she can balance on one leg. Now, there are plenty of different tests you could do. I would recommend adding one thing to this. That's pretty easy, balancing on one foot. You can see how the, if you focus on the foot, you can see how it's trying to fight to keep that balance. Those are the proprioceptors firing underneath the foot, right, to try to maintain that balance. You see she's, she has a little bit of struggle there to do it. Uh, okay, now, we, we can now add a little bit more challenging situation. This is my addition by adding a piece of foam because now we're going to really try and prove uh, kind of fool those proprioceptors and see if she can't balance on the foam. You can see how boy they're fighting much more, much more difficult, right, to maintain that balance because those proprioceptors are not in a good position. Remember we talked about the, the posture of the foot will help the proprioceptors to find that new, that good position for uh, a good balanced posture, right? Then we switch. Okay, all right, and again, she has trouble standing on that soft foam, and there she's already failing because she has to let go of her hips, right, to, and her foot goes down. So the right side's a lot worse with the foam. Okay, now we get off of this. There's several tests at the foot, so stand over here again. So one test is called the supination resistance test. I really like this and uh, developed by a podiatrist, I believe, in New Zealand. And it talks about the angle, again, sophisticated, uh, the, the angle of the subtalar joint, whether it's more a diagonal. At a 45 degree, uh, you know, how far away from that 45 degree angle it is, you know, it tells you a little bit about the foot. So if we pull, we try to, you just relax, Georgiana, don't help me. I'm gonna try to lift your arch, right? Don't help, keep that, keep it down. And um, again, don't help. Try to relax, just look straight ahead, right? And I have some difficulty lifting it up. So that's, that's a, a five is the, the most resistance. And I think I would give this a four, having difficult to lift it up. Next test is Jack's test. And I think it'd be best described if you turn sideways facing me, okay? And move this foot behind, no, the other foot. So we can watch the arch. Now watch the arch here. And if I lift the, the toe up, you can see how it raises the arch. That's called the windlass effect, right? Put a little weight on it, a little weight on it. And you can see how it raises up the arch. That's a windlass effect right there. That's called Jack's test. What that does is tell me the integrity. Switch around the other way. We'll test the left foot. Keep it forward, bring the right foot behind, okay? And I go ahead and raise up the, uh, do the Jack's test. Put a little weight on it. And you can see how it raises the arch up. So that tells me the integrity of the, sub, of the um, plantar fascia because the plantar fascia, it winds around the first metatarsal. It's attached to the medial calcaneus. And by dorsiflexing the first metatarsal, first MTP joint, uh, rather, um, the, the plantar fascia becomes tent, uh, taut and it raises the arch, and that, that's what happens in push-off. Some people will actually rupture the plantar fascia and you get a negative effect. The arch does not move. It stays flat on the floor when you dorsiflex the first ray. So it is a good test to determine the integrity of the plantar fascia. Obviously, if you've torn the plantar fascia, you have a real pronation problem.
because you've lost one mechanism uh, that helps to raise the arch or in, put the foot in more supination during push-off, which is absolutely essential. Another test that, uh, that the uh, Forum Thotic Company has come up with, which is called the four-foot stability test. And now what you're going to do is balance on this foot and try to go up on your toe for me. And that's a, and you can see how difficult that is for her to do, right? So we can say there's a forefoot instability to do the left side. So she really has all the characteristics of an excessive flat foot that would be very amenable to treating with an orthotic device, with the four orthotics. The one test I like that we could uh, do to, to further that forefoot instability testing turn a little bit to the side here, is I like to look at the supination and pronation twist of the forefoot. You just relax your foot. And if I do this, hold on to the heel, and I twist the forefoot all the way around, you can see how uh, holding on to the heel, she, I could almost get it so she can clap her feet together <laughs> if she wanted to. But then if I try to push it back the other way, it doesn't go, right? There's, there's a lack of symmetry. You see that? It's a big difference between supination of the forefoot versus pronation of the forefoot, right, is a big difference in the symmetry. It tells me that the medial arch ligaments, there's four ligaments that supply support to the arch here. The plantar fascia we talked about, the short and long plantar ligaments, and the spring ligament, which goes from the calcaneus to the navicular or navicular calcaneal ligament, and again, the spring ligament. So the arch is supported in static stance, especially by those passive structures. They're not supported by action of muscle. Muscle would have to fire for too long a period of time, fatigue, and you would always, you wouldn't have an arch. Now, in, in, in some people, you see this collapse of the arch, which is due to overstretching of those ligaments to become plastically deformed into uh, increased uh, length and therefore it has the, it does not have the tensile strength to hold those bones together, and we see that collapse. That collapse causes all sorts of problems. Again, we have the posterior tibial uh, tendon coming through here. We have the medial insertion, right, of the gastroc soleus, the soleus muscle making up one-third of the medial aspect of the Achilles. So palpation of structures along the medial, that's pretty painful. It is. Yes. Run along the medial aspect of the posterior medial, low one third of the tibia is where the soleus comes off and makes up this tendon on the medial side. You can also pal palpate the medial Kelly's attachment. You can see how she's jumping away. Very painful. Uh, going along the medial aspect, this is where Tom, Dick, and Harry come around, remember? <laughs> um, Tom is the um, posterior tibialis tendon, which is irritated, and come down into the medial arch, and that's so she's got a really I call it the medial stress syndrome, where all of those structures on the medial side are what? Overstretched. Every time she runs, she's turning the foot, pronating like this, and overstretching those structures on a regular basis. It's like a constant irritation and overuse to those areas, causing slight bleeding, actually probably inside an inflammatory condition.